Welcome to what's probably going to be my most disliked video. Scala 3.2.0 just came out and the hunting season for braces is officially reopened. Let's just rip off the bandaid and get right to it. Hey, Vlad here from devinsideview.com. Welcome to another video. As you can hear, I'm a little bit sick, but you know, show must go on. Let's start this video with a story. The year was 2017, May 20th to be precise. I was living in Germany at the time and the weather was getting warmer and the summer was coming and blah, 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 nobody cares. This was the day when Martin dropped the significant indentation bomb on us and we were furious. Some of us even went as far as saying, this is unacceptable for a service I'm paying absolutely nothing for. But the years kept rolling. Scala 3 came out almost exactly four years later in 2021, and there it was, significant indentation. Optional, of course, but you know, it wasn't behind an experimental flag. Now, this is not the end of the story, of course, and I'll tell you the rest right after the message from our sponsors, which is awesome people like yourself who support me on platforms like Patreon. Your contributions go right back into this channel, for example, they allow me to buy new hardware, pay for a video editor, a thumbnail designer, and so on. There's many of you and only one of me, so all it takes is a dollar. Thank you for supporting this channel and a special thanks to Fred Albu and Johan, who are my highest tier patrons. Thank you. Back to the story. Now, it took some time to get used to and technically many people are still on the fence to this day, but there is a clear scent of the wind of change. The TLDR is that we started liking it. In fact, some of us, including this guy, liked it so much that we wanted to use them even more, but we couldn't because there were still many places, many corner cases where we're still forced to use those pesky braces. Things like lambdas or current function calls, for instance. Now, for the most adventurous of us, there was this extra experimental flag called fewer braces, but honestly, at least I was not ready for it at the time when Scala 3 came out. So why are we here? Well, I'm recording this video in the beginning of September 2022 and Scala 3.2.0 just came out. And so there I was, anxiously scrolling through the changelog, looking for something awesome to make a video about. And, you know, there are many things that are very important for sure, but, you know, nothing exciting to actually make a video about. And then there it was, 15273 change fewer braces to always use a column, even before lambdas. Now, this is part of the Scala improvement process, SIP44. Now, calm down, people, it's not in yet. For now, it's an experimental flag, which, by the way, means that you can't use it even with Scala 3.2.0. See, when macros came out for Scala 2, they were also marked as experimental, but they were so useful that people started using them everywhere, building libraries on top, etc, etc. Now, even though me personally wouldn't have it any other way, the compiler team wasn't exactly happy about it, because now they had to maintain it and worry about things like breaking the API. And so they learned from it, and now in Scala 3, you can only use experimental flags and unstable releases like nightly builds, for example. So to sum it up, for now it's an experimental flag, but I have a feeling that it's going to sneak up on us. I'm sure it's going to be Scala 3.2.2, and all of a sudden, this flag is going to become slightly less experimental, if you know what I mean. Now, I read through SIP44 and there were a bunch of weird examples, a bunch of corner cases that, you know, this change would break and stuff, but I was curious. I needed to know what it would do to a real code base. And so here we are. I took two projects. I grabbed whatever the latest 3.2.1 RC1 nightly build was laying around a couple of days ago. And I hunted down every single curly brace just to see how it would look like. And so I'm going to show you the diffs. In fact, for one of those projects, the diff is actually on GitHub. So you can have a look yourself. Before I show you the diffs, however, I would like to point out that I like 80% of it. If you don't go too crazy about it, it actually looks kind of nice. Sure, unfamiliar, but kind of nice. I'm worried about the other 20% though. You know, in the beginning, the goal was to make Scala look a bit more like Python. But now with this thing, it kind of starts to look like YAML. I'm not even kidding. But again, I do like most of it. The first project is just a couple of lines large. It's called Minicalc and we uh, build it on stream actually. And it's a project for complete beginners. And uh, during the stream, I really wanted to make the point that uh, when you build it something small, something that you know for a fact you're not going to need to maintain, then you don't need to worry too much about strong types, functional programming, or even tests. And the point I'm trying to make here is that what you're going to see is not exactly idiomatic Scala code. And yet, 
there were enough braces to replace. So let's have a look. So let me show you the diff and the tool that I'm currently using is called Delta. I already have a video about it. You might want to check it out. So as you can see, this is all I did. I changed the version from, from 3.1.3 to whatever was laying around. And by the way, let me actually show you uh, where you can find it. If you go to dotty.epfl.ch, just grab this thing over here. This is going to be the latest nightly. This is actually the date, September 1st. I'm recording this on September 2nd. Just throw it into SBT and it will know how to resolve it. Okay, so that's all I did. I just put it in there. I enabled the experimental flag and that's it. So if we're going to scroll down a little bit, we're going to see this. And by the way, this is the first point that is very, very important is that the shape, the form of the code is unchanged. And this is actually something that is very important because when you gain more experience, especially with like one programming language in particular, you kind of start to get used to like forms and shapes. So you're visually not parsing every line. Your brain is recognizing the forms, right? So for example, if you know, oh, I'm like, traversing something then it's probably a map you know if i'm sequencing something it's probably a flat map if there's some sort of aggregation oh it's going to be like a fold right and so if you look over here you know the braces went away but the shape of the code remained the same you can obviously pause the video and look at it at, uh, at your own pace and by the way delta can be configured to actually have syntax highlighting but uh, i didn't want to do it and i explained why in that other video let's scroll down a little bit more so here we see a map and i want to point out that again this was not an idiomatic code uh, as you can see it starts at line 93 and finishes around line 119 which shouldn't even be a lambda in a proper code base it's just that you know this was like kind of a hack and so uh because of it like without the curly brace uh you kind of don't know where it's going to finish because you don't actually have end markers for these things at least i don't think that you do which again shouldn't be a problem because this shouldn't be a lambda to begin with lambda should be short let's actually scroll down i believe there will be another map see exactly here so this map is just like two lines long and therefore it looks much better without the curly brace okay and i believe this is actually the last change which is the uh curly functions right and this is this looks much nicer right without this curly brace Okay, and this is pretty much it for the first project. Let's have a look at the second one. Now, the second project is our good old to-do app. Okay, so this is the to-do app that we have written and rewritten so many times. It started with a cake pattern, then it was rewritten to Teclas Final, then it was rewritten to Zeal and Scala 3 and so on. So I did the same thing over here. I checked it out. I just replaced the version with the latest one, you know, latest nightly build. Uh, I just enabled the experimental flag. I actually also updated the SBT version just because I couldn't resist. And this was it. This is also a very important point. This is something that became so much better in Scala 3 everything is backwards compatible. So we didn't need to wait until all of these libraries would be republished for Scala 3.2.0. In fact, I'm recording this on Friday evening, September 2nd. Scala 3.2.0 just came out, but it wasn't even announced yet. And yet this code already works. The libraries didn't need to be republished. In fact, in the future, we're also going to get forward compatibility so that the library authors don't need to stay on the older versions. So what I have for you here is the few braces branch, and I have two commits. One is called the automatic rewrite. This is what the Scala compiler automatically did. And this is me just hunting down every last curly brace afterwards. In fact, let me actually show this to you. Uh, I believe I called it like like this. Uh, these are the flags that you need, uh, you know, for the automatic rewrite. Uh, maybe even just this one. I'm not sure about this one. I think you need this one for something as well, but I forgot for what. So I already have a link open that goes straight to this comparison uh, note. So it goes just to, you know, dev inside is to do then slash compare and then core headers, which is the name of the previous branch, and then three dots, and then few braces. This exact link is going to be down in the description, but uh, please pay attention because sometimes it takes forever to load, but it will load eventually. So patience you must have. All right, so let me just scroll down and show, me, show you the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to go into full screen over here. As you can see, it's just like these two commits. So we're starting with something like uh, an arbitrary over here. Not a big deal, but you know, it's starting to look kind of nice. Okay, so we're just going to scroll down another arbitrary. Now we're starting to like get rid of these of these curlies. By the way, notice over here, this is actually um, an opening param. And in Scala, uh, if a function has only one parameter, you can uh, replace uh, the regular parents with the curly braces. So if I were uh, to replace uh, this parent with curly braces, then I would be able to remove it and insert a column. Okay, so this is something that is going to become probably a little bit controversial, um, you know, because this is like the point where it's kind of like starts to look like YAML, you know, you can do like print line, colon, and then like, I don't know, like a, like a three line string for some or something, right? So it's definitely something that we're going to need some time to get used to. Okay, but I'm sure that we will eventually. Let's scroll down again, not a big deal. 
this is something that is very, very useful, right? Curry function, uh, you know, this is a task and I'll call on and then a bunch of code. Now, this is something where, um, you know, where it starts to get like really tricky, right? It's just a function that is defined a little bit below. Um, it's over here, right? So it's a boundary that uh, gets a fake gate and then it constructs a boundary implementation. And the only reason I created it is that because uh, as opposed to a real gate, the scholar will be able to infer this type over here. So now it's like make boundary colon, new colon, you know, function call, zero succeed. It used to be, you know, curly braces. Now there's a colon, there's a space because I like to uh, vertically uh, separate what has been uh, returned. So uh, very often, pretty much always, uh, if I have like a multi-line thing, um, the last line I always have like a, I always have an empty line in between. In fact, this is a file that we should probably uh, open separately over here. So we're gonna go to view file, right? So so that you can kind of like look at it um, as one thing. Okay, so this is a task and. You can kind of like still visually see that it actually ends over here. Like, I don't know, maybe it's because it's my code, uh, but to me, I can't clearly see where it ends just like by looking at it. Okay. Same thing over here, like this val, like I see that it ends here. Like I don't, I don't need the curly braces. I still need some time to actually parse this code like mentally, but just because I'm not, not super used to, right. But still, you know, make boundary. If there is a colon, this means that this is like one parameter, new anonymous class was an inferred type. Uh, overriding one function, it returns one thing, which is a zero succeed, which sets this var to true, returns a vector dot empty. Same thing over here, right? Like visually, I kind of see there are like three blocks over here. Well, technically four was this var. Um, like this used to be a curly brace. It used to close here. Like as you can see right now, I'm not actually seeing the, the diff. Uh, like, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm biased and because I wrote this code. Um, maybe maybe that's why it's easy for me to read, but I would argue that uh, I would be able to read someone else's code like this as well, okay? So basically this is a function call. This is one parameter. This part actually didn't change. Uh, this one over here, uh, it's a for all. So it's a current function. Uh, so this is a Lambda. Um, whenever this would have been another curly brace. Uh, over here, another curly brace. And by the way, this is where we actually start to see like braces like disappear. Look at this, right? In a relatively clean code base, a lot of functions are smaller than the amount of braces that we have removed over here, right? Many functions are like two, three, maybe four lines long, right? If you're, you know, if you maintain a clean code base. All right, let's uh, not dwell on this thing because you can have a look at this thing uh, at your own pace, right? Similar thing, similar thing. Um, here we're creating an HTTP server. Um, so, you know, calling here, calling here. Uh, again, notice that everywhere the shape is the same, okay? Uh, over here, like this one is actually a little bit weird. Let's actually open this one, okay? Because this one has like a crazy nesting, crazy indentation over here. Now, this is an object. So this one was like this before, okay? Uh, there is a, you know, a factory method. And then we do like zero succeed. And there was like an opening curly brace over here and it would close like all the way down there. Uh, right now we can't, we, we just don't have it, right? We just have indentation. By the way, uh, I highly recommend that, uh, you know, if you use VS Code or, you know, whatever editor you, you use, uh, enable indentation guidelines, right? Like these lines, this, these vertical lines, okay? So now like no, pay attention over here, right? So uh, this was like this before, right? This wasn't. Now we have the routes which is like one thing. Now we have the router, but again, like I visually see where it ends. It ends over here, right? Because of this thing. I see where it ends, but this used to be a curly brace. This used to be a curly brace, right? We're creating a tuple, HTTP routes off. Okay, another column. So there's a curly brace. Where does it end? Like I visually see it ends over here, right? Uh, I can totally see how like many of you, uh, you know, would argue about this. It's a controversial thing. It gets some time to get used to, but I don't know, maybe I'm biased again. Maybe it's because it's my code, but I have like zero problems reading it. Writing it, a little bit different story. Need some time to get used to by reading it. I don't know. And by the way, this is two spaces. Feel free to argue in the comments. Let's go back to the diff. Let's scroll down. I just want to see like, if I, if I see some like, like these things, like look like these, um, these curly braces, they're just like melting away. Nothing special, nothing special. Like a lot of code over here is like very, very symmetric, very similar. Um, another route. Um, nothing spectacular over here. This one is a little bit interesting, right? So there is a map over here. We should probably actually open this one. 
So this one is the to do app delivered via a console. And there's like a very long method called program over here. In fact, it's so long that I believe when I wrote it initially, uh, I actually uh, ended it like this is the only end marker that I have ever used actually in Scala 3 because it was so long and I didn't have a good way to like separate it in any case. So it has like this map over here that kind of like ends over here. But again, like I can visually see where it ends, right? So there used to be a curly brace opening here, closing over here. Okay, this one is also a little bit interesting, right? So we have like prompt dot flat map, like this used to be a curly brace, partial function, chain method call, right? Like catch all, this used to be another curly brace that would like close over here. Then we have like repeat while identity and unit. Okay, this one is a little bit interesting. So I'm just obviously I'm not going to show you like the whole thing. Well, we're already at the half, but like I'm pretty sure that I have shown you already like the most interesting ones. Like this one looks a little bit weird. Um, you know, left map colon and then just like code like hanging around. Uh, my empty line as already mentioned uh, over here, like these like uh, these like curly braces are just like melting away. Like these lines are melting away. Tests again. Um, I don't think that there's anything spectacular there. Like this one looks kind of weird because it's like for all kind of feels like a function call on a on a on a collection, but. Uh, but it's not. This one is also very interesting. Like this one, it's not it's not interesting because like so many things change, just because like this one like can clearly benefit from it. Look how like just visually look like at these blocks, right? So we're creating like a gate over here. It says you'll succeed. We're creating a new gate over here, overriding a couple of functions. Look at these like very like just visually, like very like clean blocks. Right. So if you don't look like in, in detail like at these like columns, like you just see like okay, block, block, block. And it kind of starts to look like YAML, you know, uh, but still, it's actually, I, re I really, really like it. And again, if you look at the diff, the shape didn't change, right? See over here, you know, just curlies disappeared, disappeared, disappeared. And the whole, you know, the whole file, right? Like this used to be line 74, now it's 63, right? So this is a lot, right? Like 10 lines, just like gone. Um, not that we're paying some tax for each individual line, but you know, some people would argue that it's more more readable if there's like less code there. Uh, what else? Like these ones are probably like the most weird ones, right? So it's basically like print line colon and then the parameter, right? It looks a little bit weird. Uh, but even here, it didn't change the shape, right? Uh, again, like there's only one place that changed the shape and this is this one, okay? So this is like the Scala test DSL, you know? I say, okay, the runtime exception thrown by this code should have message this one, right? And because it was like on, the, on another line, like the indentation here changed. Like this, this is like probably the, like the most weird looking one over here. But this is like such an extreme case, um, you know, that I probably should have, uh, you know, used like a dot over here and then an opening paren and stuff, right? I should not have, I should not have written it like this in the first place. And then I wouldn't even need like those backticks and stuff. Yeah, this is it. And as you can see, all I did was I changed the version, added the experimental flag, and I couldn't resist updating the SPT version, but it is actually not required. All right, now what do you think? I know this one is controversial, but I'm sure it's going to get better with tooling. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you're serious about improving the developer inside you, and if you wish to contribute to tech education, please consider doing so on Patreon or GitHub sponsors, and watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.